on the Isle of Patmos, and he began to speak to John a message to the church. Uh, of course, there's a lot of teaching today that tells us that these seven different churches are different church ages. Um, I'm not denying that possibly could true, be true, and yet on the other side, it was written to the seven different churches. And you'll discover that all of these churches, except for one, had some major problems. Um, I, I don't know why, you know, sometimes people act like, well, you know, if God's really moving, the church isn't going to have a problem. Well, that's not true. Because uh, churches are made up of people, bodies of people, individuals. And every one of us have situations in our life that need to be dealt with. Uh, a lot of these churches had been uh, infiltrated with wrong doctrines, wrong theologies, wrong ideals, wrong attitudes. And Jesus had to correct his church. Uh, someone this morning said to me after service, says, well, pastor, you know, when you're standing in the gap and you're interceding and you're praying for somebody, you know, shouldn't we have to just pray one time? And I said to him, I said, well, let me ask you something. I said, when your children were growing up, did you only have to spank them once? How many times did you have to spank them a until, you know, until the, 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 the problem stopped, right? Uh, so a lot of times, you know, we just want to, you know, we just want to deal with something one time. I'll just deal with this one time. But uh, have any of you had to deal with something uh, in your heart um, over and over and over ever since you've been saved? Sometimes the same issues. Why? Because it's a weakness in our life that the enemy tries to use against us. But here in the book of Revelation, chapter uh, 3, verse 14. Let's take a look here. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. Now, we've been talking about works in the last couple of weeks. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I, I would thou wert cold or hot. So now you notice he's not talking about fruit here. He's talking about works. Of course, if you got fruit, you'll have works. If you don't have fruit, you won't have any works. But notice Jesus said, I know thy works. And your works prove or give evidence to the fact whether you're cold or hot. Now, we want to talk a little bit longer tonight about the works of Mary Magdalene. We talked about it this morning, but I know thy works. For in other words, we give evidence by our works where we are at spiritually. Now, this is not for us to look at each other and say, oh, I know thy works. No, this is Jesus speaking. See, this is Jesus speaking. You know, this isn't you and I because we got to pull the beam out of our own eye. But uh, I know thy works. And he said, this is the problem with your works. I can tell by your works you're not really hot, but you're not really cold. You're kind of mediocre. Now, we're talking about here our relationship with Christ. We're mediocre. Now, it's kind of hard if you're raised in a mediocre generation. You, you know what I mean by mediocre generation? I mean, where there's very little uh, commitment, there's very little faithfulness, there's very little zeal, you know, zeal. Uh, Jesus, at 12 years old, he's down there speaking to the religious uh, hierarchy uh, in Jerusalem. And for three days, they ask him and answer questions. And they are amazed because here's a young man, 12 years old, and he's zealous. And matter of fact, when his parents finally show up, they said, Jesus, we've been looking for you for the last three days. And he said, no, you not. I must be about my father's business. I mean, we're talking about excitement. I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. Go ahead and look at each other. <laughs> We're talking about excitement. We're talking about zeal. I, I know people say, well, I'm, 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 I'm shouting on the inside. Well, you need to just kind of let it come out once in a while, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm shouting on the inside. I'm excited on the inside. I'm on fire on the inside, you know? No, that needs to be translated outwardly. And so Jesus says to his church, the church. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you the Laodicean church was our church age. 
But he said, notice, let's go back and see what he said. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Now, this is what Jesus said. I, I'd rather, now, don't misunderstand. He isn't telling people, I, I just, I, I would just, you know, if you ain't going to be on fire for me, just walk away from me. That's not what he's saying. He, he's saying that when people get into this lukewarm stage, it's very difficult to move them out of that comfort zone. You know what I mean? Today we have a modern terminology, uh, couch potatoes. There's a lot of couch potatoes in the body of Christ today. You, you, can't, you can't budge them. You can't move them. I mean, even with the two by four, you know, you can't. They just, you know, you can't move them to praise. You can't move them to worship. You can't move them to read their Bibles. You can't move them to witness. You can't move them to go to church. And it's, and it's, 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 uh, when I've been out there in, in, in the secular world working, uh, I, and you just, everywhere you look, you see mediocre people, just mediocre people. And God doesn't want us to be mediocre. You know, God wants us to be zealous of good works. The Bible says we're peculiar people created unto zealous works, where we're supposed to be zealous people. We're supposed to be zealous well, well, Pastor Mike, excitement isn't just a part of my life. Well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, one morning you woke up and, you know, and you saw yellow and orange and kind of bright flashes and you looked out, you looked out your, your bedroom door and your kitchen was on fire. I'm sure you'd just say, hey, babe, the house is on fire. Come on, let's get the kids. Let's get out of here. Would there be any zeal? I would hope there would be. I hope you say, honey, the house is on fire. Come on. I remember one morning I was, I was uh, just got out of boot camp, and uh, I was uh, uh, in my barracks going through training to be electrician electronics. And I woke up one morning, and I, sm I smelled smoke. I mean, I didn't have a very good sense of smell, but I smelled smoke. And so I, I, I got up, and I got my pants on, and I ran out to the guard at the front desk, and I said, hey, I said, um, I said, do you smell smoke? What? The guy was tired from standing guard duty all night long. What? I said, I smell smoke. I don't smell no smoke. So I looked around, and I said, something's wrong. And, 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 and so I ran outside, and I looked in here. The, the barracks next to me was like a six-story barracks. I saw smoke coming out the window. So I ran over there, and here the guy, the guard at the door. I said, you got a fire. You got a fire. He said, what? What? I said, your building's on foot. So I ran past him, and I grabbed the alarm, and I pulled the alarm, and I began to evacuate everybody out of the building. Now, I actually got a citation. I got a, uh, I got a re letter of recommendation from, uh, I can't remember the admiral's name. But the thing is, just, what? And here, the building's on fire. And it's like, come on, guys. Something's happening here. But because they couldn't see it, and they couldn't feel it, and they couldn't smell it, I couldn't get no response out of them. Well, you know, right now, you know, we're, we're, we're in the midst of, 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 a, of, I'd say, the greatest opportunity that anybody's ever had to reach people, and yet it's the most dangerous time. I was just thinking that scripture this morning in 2 Timothy chapter 3, for in the last day perilous times would come. For men would be covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, you know, covenant breakers, on and on and on. It's a perilous day we live in. And, and here Jesus is talking to the church. He said, I can tell by your works you're not cold and you're not hot. I can tell by your works. Now remember the Bible says, be you doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. So we can deceive ourselves. Every, yeah, everything's okay. I, yeah, I love Jesus. I I, I read my Bible once in a while. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I go to church whenever I feel like it. I, uh, you know, I, I give. I drop a couple bucks in when the bucket passes. And, you know, I just, uh, no, no. See, this, this, is, this is what's going on in our modern-day society. We need to stir ourselves up. The Bible says stir yourself up. Stir up the gifts that are within you. Stir yourself up. You mean, Pastor Mike, I should try to get myself excited? Yeah. You know why? Because he's worth getting excited about. You, you know, I mean, I'm, 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 this sounds stupid, but I've been married for over 30 years, and I, my wife still excites me. Isn't that wonderful? No? I think it is. Huh? I'm still, 
excited about being married. You know, uh, you know, life still excites me. Uh, you know, the Bible still excites me. You know, Jesus still throws my soul. I mean, I'm, I'm still excited about Jesus. But, but what can you do, you know, with a lukewarm person? Let's say it this way. Lukewarmness means lazy. You know, really, somebody who's lukewarm, they're lazy. You know, that's. You know, you know, and I'm not attacking, this is true. There's a lot of people in the modern day church, they're lazy. Why? Because this is the day and age of laziness. I mean, people are lazy today. I mean, if you're a person who's kind of hyper, you're kind of get up and go, you're kind of want a live wire, you know, you're kind of on fire, it, it about drove, drive you nuts if you got a bunch of lazy people working for you. I mean, you know, come on, man. Come on, you walk around like you're dead. You walk around like you're half dead. What's wrong with you? And you know what? It, you look in their eyes, and it's just like there's no sparkle in their eyes. There's no light in their eyes. There's no, there's no enthusiasm in their eyes. There's no zeal in their eyes. And, and so what do we do? Well, look what Jesus said. Look it. I know thy works in verse 15 of chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Listen, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I will spew thee out of thy mouth. And, and the word spew there means to vomit, to upchuck, <laughs> to you. I'm going to puke you out. Oh, come on, Pastor Mike. That's not very nice. You, you understand this. this Jesus is being honest. That's the only thing he can be because he's truthful. He says, get your stuff together or you're not going to make it. it you, you know what I'm saying? Get it together or you're not going to make it. Oh, it's almost like going to the doctor and the doctor tells you, listen, you got this particular problem with your body and here's the things that you need to do if you want to live. And if you want to live, then you better do these things because if you don't do these things, you're, you're, you're a goner. Now I, I now, I know that would impress people, but through the years, I've known people who had different physical disorders. Let's say you go and he says you got high blood pressure or you got sugar diabetes. I've, I've known people personally that they were told they had sugar diabetes. You need to change your eating habits. You need to change your living standard. And I watch these people to where I watched them to where they began to get parts of their body amputated. I knew one guy for years. He was told, listen. You got sugar diabetes, and this is your problem. You need to change your diet. You need to get rid of some of that weight. You need to deal with these things. And I remember him telling me this stuff, but when he told me, it was like, yeah, the doc told me. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, you know, the doc told me, yeah, but what are you going to do? And next thing you know, gangrene set in one of his feet. Next thing you know, they caught off a leg. Next thing you know, he was going blind. He went blind, and then he died. Now, this is in about a 10-year process, but he didn't take it to heart. It, it, he, didn't, he didn't grab it. He didn't heed it. He didn't listen. It, it's, like, it's like he didn't care. It, he, just this lackadaisical, well, there's nothing I can really do about it. Anyways, I was thinking the other day, I don't know how true it, it is, but but when the Titanic went down, I heard that, and, and you know, if you watch the old, old movie, uh, where, where I saw it when I was a kid, the black and white movie, that all the men gathered together and all the bands and all the instruments, and they were up on the front top part of, part of the boat, and they're all singing a song as the boat goes down. Get out of here, man. I'm going to rip a, a, I'm gonna rip a tub out of, a, a, of one of these executive suites. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find some plastic, and I'm, I mean, I ain't going to sit on that deck while it's sinking, not doing nothing. I mean, he says, oh, well, we're all gone, or so let's go down singing Amazing Grace. No, I'm going to sing Amazing Grace as I'm trying to find a way to escape that sinking boat. I'm not just going to, you know, play the part of an opossum, lay down and play dead. You know, we're not supposed to, God's not called us to be pacifist. Don't be a pacifist. You'll find most pacifists are, are, are pessimistic. Just don't. Oh, well, there's nothing I can do. I, I, I read this story, I, and, 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 and uh, the, 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 two of these guys, who I think it's called YouTube, two of these guys were unemployed. 
And they couldn't get a job. And they said, well, let's do something. And so they came up with the idea of putting, letting people put videos up on the Internet. They created the YouTube, and Google turned around and bought it from them for like a billion dollars. Because they didn't have, I'm, oh, well, I'm just a lump on a log, you know. <laughs> Nothing I can really do. You know, it's like the ten spies. They're too big for us. See, the furnace, they weren't zealous. Now, Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. They had a zealous spirit. They had a, yeah, let's go. Come on, devil, let's do it. You know what? That, that, it's hard to find people like that today, isn't it? In the church and in the world. In the world. You go out in the world and everybody walks around like they're half dead. Go to Walmart. I mean, it makes you tired looking at people. Don't look around. And you know what? When people don't have any zeal and no gumption, yeah, well, you're making me tired, Pastor Mike, just the way you're moving around up there. You know, like you got ants in your pants. Well, come on. Spiritually, come on. Come on. You know, let's, let's get up. Let's believe God. Let's, let's, let's trust him in his word. Let's, let's, you know, and he says, because you're neither cold nor hot, but because you're lukewarm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spew you out of my mouth. For words, I, I want something more out of you. Now, it's one thing if God expects us to do something we can't do. But it's another thing if God expects us to do something we can do. See, I, you know, I, I go past people who are living in poverty. Um, and, and uh, okay, so you're living in poverty. But that doesn't give give you an excuse your yard should not be a junkyard unless you collect junk and you sell it but i mean you go past people's houses who are living in abject poverty and their houses are pig pens the yards are pig pens everything's a mess nothing and they just lay around and watch tv all day long well spiritually speaking there's a lot of people like that spiritually they just they won't grab themselves by their bootstraps and get up well what can i do pray What can I do? Read your Bible. What can I do? Share your faith. What can I do? You run into somebody who's sick, ask them, can I pray for you? You never know. God might do a miracle. You know, I think about Samaria, when the Samaritans, when they're surrounded and, and the enemy surrounded them and, 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 and they don't have nothing to eat and, 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 and they're eating. Listen, they're eating the dung of doves. They're selling it. They're, they're, they're selling the head of a, of, a, of, a, of a donkey for a lot of money. And then one day, all of a sudden, two women go before the king, and, and, and they, 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 they're fighting over the fact that they had killed one's baby, the one lady's baby one day, and now the next day they want to, and the other lady won't give up her baby. And there's some lepers that are there, and, and they said, you know what, why should we just lay here and die? Well, I, why, why should we just lay here and die? Let's, let's just, you know, if we die, we die. Let's, let's get up. And so they go out. And actually, I wasn't planning to preach along this Sunday night. But let's go out. And, and if we die, we die. But as they went, all of a sudden, the armies around them thought they heard this, this, this army marching to get them. And when they got out there, guess what? All the enemies had fled, and God wrought an awesome victory And before you know it, they had more wealth and they had more food than anybody could imagine. And and, and they for a while they got, you know, they got selfish and they're hiding it and grabbing it. And they said, what in the world are we doing? So they ran back to and they said, listen, they're gone and all the wealth is there. And they all ran out and got the wealth. But see, they got into this mode. Oh, my hands are tied. It's the end of the world. They're talking about the one world currency everywhere you look, Germany and France and Spain and Great Britain, even Geithner, even Obama. They all want us to go to one world currency. There's nothing we can do. It's the end of the world. Well, wait, we're not of this world anyways. We got a job to be done, right? We got people to reach. But see, you, you gotta, you gotta, you know what? It, it, you gotta just, you gotta say, I'm not, I'm, I may go down, but I'm not going down without a fight. I mean, you gotta get this fighting attitude. You know what I mean? Can y'all put your dukes up for a moment? Just go ahead. Come on, can you at least put your dukes up? 
There you go. Okay. Just put your dukes up. Don't aim at your brother now. Don't look at your brother with your dukes. See, I'm so, see, see, I'm not giving up without a fight, devil. See, I'm not giving up without a fight, man. I'm not, come on, man. Hey, I'm going to get some licks in there before I go down. I'm going to get some punches in there. Huh? I'm going to, you know, I'm at least give you a black eye. And you'll be amazed that when you begin to swing your spiritual arms and you begin to get this fight. See, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I'm a fighter. I'm not a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. Winners never lose and losers never win. Just, you, you got, get up, get up, get up. And he says, because you're cold, neither cold nor hot, but because you're lukewarm, I can't. G Listen, Jesus says, I can't handle that. Now, people say this. Listen, people say, well, it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you. Well, listen. It's so listen what he just said here. I don't want you lukewarm. I want you hot, really. I want you red hot. I want you on fire for me. Well, Pastor Mike, what if I'm just not red hot? You know, I used to imitate Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh. Remember? I'm just so sad. I don't think we're going to make it. I know it's going to rain. And the sun is shining, you know. I used to imitate Eeyore just to tease my kids. That's a terrible person to imitate Eeyore. It's stuffed donkey, you know. <laughs> you could call him something else, but I won't do that. A stuffed donkey. I just don't know. Well, a lot of people act that way spiritually. I've been there, man. But you got to, you know, I think we ought to be like Tigger. Amen. <laughs> I think you want to be like Tigger. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's do it. Come on. I mean, just think if somebody came into church and we're all acting like Tigger, man, they say, whoa, that church is really on fire, you know. And how you do that, Pastor Mike? You just do it by faith. Just do it. You're not being a hypocrite, you know. You just, man, I'm going to praise God. I'm just going to, I'm just, see, you would be amazed. How many ever been around a home where they have a, a water pump outside or in a house? My, my grandparents, say, my, my, great, my grandpa and grandma, they had an, a pump in their old German house. They didn't have electric water, and they would take that pump, and we'd have to put some water down it, and then we'd have to pump it real fast because we had to create suction to bring up what's in, what's in the well. See, there's water in the well. But you got to create a function through vigor to bring it up. And if you would dump that water in the pump and you'd go, it'd lose all of its suction. You wouldn't get any water. You could stand there all day. Grandma, nothing's happening. No, you had to pump. And all of a sudden, you feel the pressure. And all of a sudden, up would come the water. I'm telling you, it's that way spiritually. What the old saying is what you put in is what you get out. You got to put something into it. You got to put your heart. Let me say it this way. My heart's just not in it. You know, that's what lukewarm people are. They're, they say, my heart's just not into Jesus. Well, why? Do you understand the price he paid? Do you understand the blood he shed? Do you understand the pain he went through? Do you understand the agony? Do you understand that God became a man in order to save you? Why well, I'm just not worth saving. Or the devil told me I can't be saved. Well, why in the world would you want to listen to that bold-faced liar? Shout this out. The devil's a liar. Okay, I heard one person shout it. <laughs> the devil's a liar. He is a liar. See, he's a liar. See, liar, liar, pants on fire. You know, he's a liar. See, but let God be true and every man a liar. See, you, 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 you gotta, you gotta put your heart into this thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I've seen um, I've seen people who stand up and they speak. the orators. And I want to give a plug nickel for some of them. There's no passion. There's no zeal. There's no unction. There's, it's just dead. You know, it's like a dead, wet, cold, stinking fish. There's no life to it. Well, you know what? It's our, this is what Jesus said. I've seen your works. Now, Pastor Mike, do I have to act like you? No, you got to act worse. No. <laughs> I've seen your works. Well, that's just not my personality. 
let me tell you what. You wouldn't want to know my personality before I got born again. Jesus will mold and shape your personality. You know what? I, I'm just going to tell you the honest truth. I don't believe for a moment all of this teaching of the four different types of personality. I don't accept that. I fell into that, you know, the, the, and, and we even had a conference here with Dr. Tim LaHaye, and we taught everybody there's personalities. And one day I'm looking, well, my personality is this lay back, easy, do nothing. And my personality is I'm just judgmental. I'm prophetic. I call those things away, and on and on. And, uh, and one day I, I was looking at these books because we got trained this, you know, psychology. And the Spirit of God said, son, he said, none of that's true. I said, what? He said, that's just an excuse for you not to change. That's what he told me. He's now nah, they'll blow a lot of those conferences. They wouldn't be making no money. That's just an excuse for you not to change. You can be whoever I called you to be. And you can do whatever I've called you to do. And you can, and because see, prophetic personality, that means you don't have to be sweet and kind and gentle and long suffering. You know, I could take you through these personalities, and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, Son, I'm your personality. Jesus is my personality. See, and I'm not saying that to attack people. I'm just saying it's an excuse. I don't want to give people an excuse not to get where they need to be. Now, if, 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 if tomorrow morning you, you knew you had to be somewhere, you had to get there, what would you do? If, if you didn't know how to get there, of course, we got GPSs now, you take out a map. You say, okay, this is where I need to get. This is where I need to be. This is, okay, well, what do you do? You do that spiritually. God, where do I need my, to be in my prayer life? Where, where do I need to be in my praise life? Where do I need to be in my witnessing life? Where do I need to be in my, par you know, every part of life, where do I need to be? You'll find it if you want it. And then you begin to believe God. Okay, God, I'm going to get there. I'm going to worship you in spirit and in truth. You seek for those who worship you in spirit and truth. You wouldn't tell me if I couldn't do it. You want me to be a witness, okay? I'm going to get there, Lord. You told me to be a witness, okay? I'm going to be a witness. Remember the, the, the men that were given the pounds, and one guy hid his pound in the earth and said, Well, you know, Lord, I only had a pound. Uh, and I knew you were a hard taskmaster. I, I, knew, I knew you were really, you know, hard. And so I, I hit it. And, G, and the master said this, you wicked, slothful servant. I'm, he said, I'm going to judge you according to your words. <laughs> now, there is no reason for that man not to take the pound. What little bit he had. I don't know what your pound could be. A little bit of faith, a little bit of IQ, a little bit of effort, a little bit, a little bit. Take your little bit and put it to work. Let it work for you. I, I, how many ever heard of the guy named Amos? Amos Famous Cookies. You ever hear of Amos Famous Cookies? You ever, do you know his story? He's just, he was an unemployed black gentleman. I'm talking about in the natural, in the natural. But he had an old recipe. And so he thought, okay, well, I'll just start. And he began to make his little cookies, and he went to, uh, he got permission at an airport. And he began to sell his cookies at an airport. And he began to take off, and he began to expand. And he became world famous, Amos Famous Cookies, because a man who was unemployed said, I'm not sitting around and letting grass grow up between my toes. I'm going to do something. Well, how much more spiritually? How much more spiritually could we do? But see, the thing is, is you got to get out of this ditch. Now, I'm not saying you're in a ditch, but if you ever get in a ditch, you got to get up. How do you climb? You climb up out of the ditch with the words of your mouth, with your actions, with your thoughts, your deeds. Now, why were they in a ditch? Verse 7. Because, this is why you're in a ditch, this group of people, because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing, and knowest not. That thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. For in other words, they got all everything. You know, that sounds like America. They don't need God no more. They don't need a church. They don't need to pray. They don't need, they don't need, they don't need to cry out to Jesus. I, I've got it, man. I got a good job. I got a house. I got a car. I, I, I've got a color TV. I, I've got, I, I, I've got a, a plasma TV, 56 inch, you know, and I've got, you know, on and on and on and on. I don't need, I don't need. And he says they don't even, now we're not, we're not talking about people in the world. We're talking about the church. You think you're okay. 
when you don't even know it. You're miserable. Now, you could tell if you look in the mirror. <laughs> now, you are the church down the road. They could tell they were miserable if they look in the mirror. If somebody could record them on a camera and play it back to them. And they could see how they act and how they talk and how they live. It might shock them. That can't be me. I heard a true story about this one guy who went to prison and, and, and well, he had to stand before the judge and he was accused of robbing a store. And they, they, no, no, I didn't rob that store. And said, well, we got you on hidden camera. And so they showed him the camera picture. And there he is robbing the store. He said, no, no, that's not me. <laughs> and it was him right there on the camera. But he couldn't admit it. He wouldn't admit it. But he said, listen what he says. Well, okay, Pastor Mike, so now you've really made me feel down. Uh, you've bummed me out. What am I supposed to do? Well, look at what Jesus said. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mightest be rich, and, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thou shame, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. I, I encourage you to buy. Well, Pastor Mike, I thought everything's free. Don't you understand? What, we're not talking about buying salvation. We're saying it costs you something to get close to God. It's going to cost you something. It, it requires something of you. It requires, it requires you to say something. It requires you to do something. It requires you. It requires some effort here. You know, it requires some energy here. It requires some get up and go. It requires it. And if you don't, if you don't want to pay the price to, you know, what can you do? If somebody, you know, have you ever dealt with people who just never really wanted to do anything with their life? You can't really do much for them. And first of all, you got to get them to believe that they can be more than what they are. They can do more than what they have, that God can use them. See, I, I, how can we convince you that God wants to use you? We're talking to people by video tonight, you know, or through YouTube and GodTube. God wants to use you. God wants to speak through you. God wants to flow through you. God wants to set people free through you. Huh? Do you understand Smith Wigglesworth was a man who only had, had a third grade education. That's all he had. His wife, Polly, was the pastor of the church. They started a little church. And Polly could not for the life of her to get Smith to get up there. Smitty, she used to call him Smitty. Smitty, you preach. Smitty would get up there. He'd stump around a little bit. And he'd sit down. He could, he could not get him to speak, could not get him to do anything. Now, he, he would minister to the, the, the orphans out on the, on the docks and the wharf. Uh, and, and, but he, they, and, 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 and she used to get so kind of upset. You know, she'd get, Polly would get upset. And, Come on, Smitty. Come on, do something, Smitty. Come on. And, and, and this went on for years and years, and Smitty got lukewarm, and, and then he heard about a church where people were getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, and now he got some fire in him. He went down to that church, and he said, you know, he said, I'm not going nowhere till I get the Holy Ghost. He just got that attitude. I'm not going nowhere. And, and it's, like, it's like when, 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 when uh, 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 um, La, I mean, Jacob said, I'm not letting go of the angel till I get blessed. And he wouldn't let go, put his hip out, and finally, the angel blessed him. But Smitty said, I'm not going. And he was down there day after day after day. And he'd show up at the pastor's house. He said, I want the Holy Ghost. And the pastor said, I don't know what to do. And one day he went there, and the pastor was there, and his wife was there. And his wife says, you're going to get it. Something along this line. Slapped her hands on Smitty, and Smith got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I mean, he just took off like a, like a, like, like, you know, a rocket to the moon. I mean, just boom, he got in there. And one, one day they're in church, Smitty got back, filled the Holy Ghost. And he said, Polly, I, I feel like I want to preach. She said, there's the pulpit. And you know what? He preached every week then. I mean, I'm fire for God. She sat back there. She was so excited. Oh, man. See, God transformed him, but he had to put something into it. See, transformation is waiting for every one of us, but you've got to put something into it. You've got to believe God, that God wants to do something, and the devil's going to tell you, oh, God can't use you. God will never flow through you. You're, you're, you're nothing. Well, that's right. We are nothing, and he's everything. So he, she, he said, buy of me, buy of me. Why? Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke. 
and chasten. As many as I love, I rebuke. You know, preachers, they're standing up there and telling people whatever they want to hear. Well, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I don't want to make you feel not happy. Well, I'm trying to make you uncomfortable. I want to light a fire underneath your blessed assurance. Can I say that? I, I want to see a fire light up inside of you. I, I want to I wanna see you become like a bunch of uh, jack-in-the-boxes, you know, just jumping, shouting, hallelujah. Well, Pastor Mike, that, won't that disturb your preaching? No, I mean, if I just had a couple do it tonight, it'd make me happy. <laughs> just, you know, some jack-in-the-boxes. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, we are Pentecostal. I mean, you never know it, but <laughs> we are Pentecostal. Huh? I mean, Pentecostal people, you know, when people say, that, that church is really on fire. What are they talking about? They're not talking about people going. No, man, they're talking about, woo, hallelujah, yeah, thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I preach my faith, by the way. I mean, God wants them fire under us he wants you know what mom and dad if you ain't got no fire your kids ain't gonna have no fire you gotta you gotta have some zeal you know you gotta have some enthusiasm you, you gotta have some fire you know and and so he said listen he said as many as I, I love I rebuke them I reprove them behold verse 20 I stand at the door and knock I'm knocking if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Wow, that's some encouragement. Jesus says, hey, I want you to over. What do you got to overcome, Pastor Mike? Your flesh. See, your flesh don't want to do anything. Your flesh doesn't want to worship God. Your flesh doesn't want to praise God. Your flesh don't want to run around the church. But I, I, I think I would have some of you run around this church tonight. See, but your flesh don't want to do it. Amen. You think God would actually want me to run around this church? Well, yeah. Woo! Why would I want to do that? Well, I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, but Pastor Mike... What if I get in the flesh? You're already in the flesh. You're already in the flesh. Yeah, hey, listen. You're in the flesh when you won't worship him. Because he's worthy of your worship. You're in the flesh when you won't praise him. Jesus said if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. You understand? People are so concerned. Well, Pastor Mike, I don't want to be in the flesh. And they don't even know they already are in the flesh. See, when you're walking in the spirit, you're, listen, you can ask my kids, my wife. When I'm in the flesh and when I'm in the spirit, I'm two different men. See? Now, just because I'm in the flesh and I'm in the spirit, I don't go, well, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so I'm going to crucify the spirit. No, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so I need to crucify my flesh. When, I, when I'm in the flesh, see, how do I know if I'm in the flesh? Well, you just look at the scriptures. Okay, when I, what, what does the spirit do? How does the spirit respond? How does the spirit act? What does the spirit say? Jesus says, I'm knocking on your door. I'll come in. I'm going to sup with you. You're going to sup with me, and you will overcome. And if you overcome, you're going to sit with me on the throne. No, on the throne. Now, that's what it says, doesn't it? Look what it says there. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me on my throne. Whoa, if you get a revelation, sitting on the throne of God with him. Now, if you sit on God's throne, you're going to see everything that God sees. No other angelic being, no other creation has ever been invited to sit upon the throne with God. And God said, you know what? If you'll be on fire, if you get passionate, if you'll get zealous for me, you'll overcome, and I'll let you sit on the throne. It's like sitting on Daddy's lap. You, know? you can sit on my lap. You can sit on the throne with me. 
uh, and rule the nations and judge the angels. Now, let, let's go over here to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. In verse 36. Well, let's read first chapter 8. I want you to see who Mary Magdalene is. It says right here. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. So here you got a, a, a young lady who had been in a terrible condition and position. Thank God none of us have ever had seven devils. Amen. None of us have ever been in the condition she was. She gets delivered and she becomes on fire for God. And now she's right there with Jesus. She's right there with Jesus. She's right there with Jesus. I mean, she is hot on the heels of Jesus. I mean, you know. I mean, just like, just, just like a, 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 a red bone coon hound right on a hot trail of a raccoon that just ran across the road. I mean, see, I, I, when I used to do raccoon hunting, my, when you get on a hot trail like my dog, Big Red, man, he, could, he would track a coon with his nose up in the air because the scent was so hot. And, I mean, you never heard such a wonderful uh, bark in your whole life when he, he would be on that, and he was just hot on the trail. Well, that's how we need to be with God. Just, whew, man. Just on fire for God. You know, and that's what revival is. Revival in your heart is when, shoo, man, I can't get enough of him. I want more of him. I got to have more of him. I, I, I want to just do his will. I just want to seek his face. And, 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 and I don't know, how, how many would like to go and, 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 and to, a, let's say, a, a Christian concert, and everybody up there on the stage looks like they're about ready to fall over from boredom, and almost everybody in the crowd is sleeping and snoring. No, you, you like some life. You, ever, you know what I'm talking about? Life. Life. Say life. <laughs> life. <laughs> no, life. You know, I mean, yeah, listen. Man, I hope when you proposed to that little lady of yours, you didn't say, I was just kind of hoping and maybe wondering, and it really doesn't matter to me a lot, but would you marry me? You'd slap them, wouldn't you? Man, I can't live without you, babe. I need you in my life. You're, you're my song. You're my rhythm. You're, uh, man, I, you're just my every, every thought is about you. I, I can't understand women marrying men as if they're, you know, these guys, they marry these guys. They act like they're doing their wives a favor by asking them to marry them, you know. I'm doing you a favor. There's a thousand other woman, young women out there. They'd gladly marry me, but I'm doing you a favor. Would you marry me? You ought to say, get lost. <laughs> I, I want to marry you. With, I would touch you with a thousand foot pole. Man, I don't see no fire in your eyes. I don't see no love. I don't see no, well, you know, Pastor Mike, we just get, you know, I just get desperate. Listen, I tell you what, you need to get desperate for Jesus. God will give you the right mate if you get desperate for God. He will. Uh well, look what it says here in Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees described, uh, desired him that he would eat with him. And when he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus had at meet in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Something, something happened in this young lady's life. Uh, this, this, yes, it affected her mind, her emotions, every aspect of her existence. She's already been walking with Jesus, you understand. But she got a revelation of who Jesus was. I don't know how. She got a revelation of his suffering, of his pain, of his agony, of what he was going to have to go through. She got a revelation of it. And it overwhelmed her. And she began to express this, this love, this deep love that was in her heart for Christ. This, this, this deep love. And, and, and to the Pharisees, notice what the Pharisee said in verse 39. When the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake with himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. For she is a sinner. No, she was a sinner. She ain't no sinner no more. I mean, she's free now. But religious people don't like 
people who are passionate for God. You know what I mean by that? I'm not talking about putting on a big display, trying to get everybody's attention. I'm, I'm saying that when people really get passionate for Jesus, I mean, really get on fire for Jesus, it makes people who are lukewarm or not committed, like, you know, it makes them nervous. See, this religious man, uh, he was more concerned about the money he was bringing in, the house he was living in, the clothes he was wearing. He, he wasn't passionate for Jesus. And, of course, then Jesus tells them about the fact that, you know, two men, they are both are forgiven. One's forgiven of a lot. One's forgiven for a little. Which one is going to love more? But notice what he says about this, this lady in uh, verse 44. And he said to the woman, and, and he said to the woman, and said unto Simon, he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman, verse 44, I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears, wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with her ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she did what? She loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same love with little. Now, how do you know, Jesus, she loved much? How do you know that? By her actions. It, you know, you never, you, you've heard a pint of example is worth more than a gallon of advice. You know, uh, actions speak louder than words. Listen, if I, if I tell my wife and my kids I love them, it doesn't mean a lot. Not that you shouldn't say that, but it's, what you do for them that reveals your love to them it's what you do it's what you do i mean there's a lot of guys out here taking and, and girls too i guess telling people i love you i love you i love you but it, there's no love in it it's just lust it's just selfishness it's just meism and when they get done using them they throw them away it's happening everywhere do you understand that almost like 50 percent of all of our children last year were born out of wedlock in america do you understand what's going on the love of many shall wax cold because iniquities shall abound there, there it, it seems like deeds and, and 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 actions and words and and don't mean anything anymore but in god's in god's kingdom they do jesus said this woman proved she loved me abraham proved that he loved god when he offered up isaac we prove whether or not we love god by what we do by what we say by how we act by how we treat people and this woman now listen this is where we want to get to before we close this woman had been a mess i mean she was an absolute wreck and she had been a sinner that pharisee was right she had been a sinner but she was transformed or she was changed into another person. How did she get changed, Pastor Mike? By love. Not just the fact that she, lo she got loved because everything Jesus did was an act of love. Let me give an example. How many people did Jesus feed? How many people did Jesus heal? How many people did Jesus deliver? Uh, uh, masses. How many of them changed? Not a lot. Why? Because they never chose to love back. We love him because he first loved us. See, this, this is what transforms you. When you decide to love back, you love me, I'm going to love you back. You blessed me, I'm going to bless you back. You gave to me, I'm going to give back. I'm, gonna, I'm in a hurry to love you back. You know, that's what actually transformed the life of, uh, of Liz, little sister Teresa, you know, in Calcutta, India. Uh, what was her whole name? They just called her Sister Teresa. Huh? Anybody can talk? Nobody knows the little Catholic? None? Was her name Teresa Kathy? Okay, so she was just a little lady. She was only like four foot something. But she said, as a little girl, her mother taught her to be in a hurry to love Jesus. And she said to love Jesus, she couldn't help but loving people. She couldn't help but loving people. Listen. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to leave this world without leaving an impact upon a society. I want to have an impact on society. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, you know, I just don't want to live and die and not, and, 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 and not have any impact on people's lives around me. 
I, I want I want to I want I want to hear the master say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy salvation. But I know this, that if I don't have love, love, it says the love of Christ constraineth me. If I don't have love in my heart for God, which equates love for people, I'm just, I'm just going to be another, you know, statistic in, in the newspaper. I'm just going to be another tombstone in the graveyard. I'm not, I, I want to, I, I want to, but, but it's not the fact I want to have an impact on society. It's just, I can never pay Jesus back for what he's done, but I sure want to try. How about you? I sure want to try. I want to, I want to try to pay him back. Uh, it's, it's a very frightening time. Look there in Mark 16, verse 9, as we get ready to close. Look there in Mark 16. See, the Bible says, listen to me, in the last days, people would become unthankful. And, and what does that mean? That means they won't appreciate. They won't appreciate no matter what people do to them. You know, their parents put them through college. Ah, well. You know, uh, people help them. Oh, who cares? Um, I, I've run into this a lot uh, up on the hill taking care of these guys, helping these guys. I mean, a lot, a lot of these guys, man, uh, through the years, they owed me money. And, uh, I, you know, just let them go. But I could tell you right now, they didn't appreciate it. But that's not my worry. My, 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 my attitude is I need to be a blesser. Whether people respond or not, I need to be a giver. Whether people respond or because I'm doing it as on to Christ. Right? But, you know, you, you got to have this zeal. Look there what it says here in verse 9 of chapter 16 of Mark. Now, when Jesus was risen early in the first day of the week, he appeared first. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. He appeared. She just didn't accidentally see Jesus. Jesus says, you know what? Huh, listen. For all these bigoted men who, do, who think that God can't use women, this is a spit in their face. Jesus does not appear to Peter or John or Luke or Matthew or any of them. He appears to Mary. Why would he appear to Mary? Because she expressed her love for Christ. Remember it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, Mary was there at the foot of the cross when Jesus was hanging. And he was crying out to the Father. And he said to John, John, behold your mother. And mother, behold your son. And, and he was there when he said to the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. And she was there when, he, when he, he, she, she heard Jesus say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he gave up the ghost. She heard and she saw the earth rip apart and the thunder and the lightning and the darkness for the space of three hours. And then she saw as he took down his cross and she helped disconnect the nails out of his hands out of his feet and helped prepare him for the tomb and she wept she cried as they took him all the way to the tomb and laid him in the tomb and for the next three days I, I, I believe she wept her heart out to where she couldn't cry another tear because of her love for Christ and she was down because on the Sabbath day she wasn't allowed to go nowhere but when the sun rose up she was down at that tomb and because she wanted to finish the burial rites, and there Jesus appeared to her, said, Mary, Mary. And she cries out, that she thought was the gardener, where have you laid my Lord? Where have you put him? And, 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 and she, he cried out, Mary. And she looked at him, she said, Rabboni, master, and fell at his feet. And he said, don't touch me yet, because I have not yet ascended to your God and my God, you know. Your Lord and my Lord, I'm got to ascend. He said, but go and tell my disciples. He appeared to her first. Why? Because of her love for him. You know, the Bible says, listen, it's, it's a scripture. God loves them that love him. You know, have we come to a time where people are unable to love? I hope we haven't. I hope we can still love. I'm in the church. I hope we can still love. I hope, I hope that this actually happened to us, and uh, we went to the grocery store today, 
And there was a person in that grocery store, I didn't even know the person was there, that really got highly offended at us at one time. I didn't know what I did. I didn't understand what I did. I just gave it to God. I prayed. And that person responded, saw us, came over and responded. And, and you know what? We opened up our heart to the person, and God turned it around. Why? Because we open our hearts up to people. See, what the devil meant for evil, God turned it to good. See, and that's how we do with every aspect of life. We open our hearts up, and we go, God, all I want is your best for all of these people. No matter who we run into, no matter who we meet, no matter what happens, we just want the best, right? Because, see, the devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy. You know that? The devil wants to kill you. Do you know that? But you know what? We don't have to let the devil kill us, do we? Amen. <laughs> Turn to someone and tell them, I refuse to be lukewarm. <laughs> Say, I will not be lukewarm. I will be hot for Jesus. I will be on fire for God. I will be. And watch out, devil. I'm going to be so hot, you can't even touch me. <laughs> uh, on fire for God amen you know you got to fight to stay that way you got to fight to keep passion fight to keep passion the bible says without the vision people perish don't lose your vision for God don't lose your vision I you know I mean the devil's going to try to get you to give up and quit just you're not a quitter you, you know you don't even look like a quitter tell the person next to you you don't look like a quitter <laughs> you don't look like a quitter and you don't look like a loser. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and in the first place, I ain't got enough intelligence to quit. <laughs> Amen. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you, Lord. We'll not quit. We'll not give up. We'll not let go. And Lord, I thank you that we're bringing forth works, Lord, works that are evidence to the fact that we're not lukewarm in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts, amen. Well, now, if you're, if you're here tonight and you say, well, Pat, we all struggle with lukewarmness. Don't think for a moment none of us do, but you just got to fight it. You got to fight lukewarmness. You got, hey, even last year, you really think my flesh wanted to be here almost every night at church? It really didn't. My flesh didn't want to be here some nights. But I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I don't care. I'm going to do this. You know, it's just like you ladies taking care of your houses. You don't want to wash the clothes and, 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 and do the dishes and sweep the floor. I'm assuming you all do. Uh, <laughs> but you do it anyways. How about when your kids were little? You don't like to change diapers, but you did it. I hope you did. <laughs> I, I hope you ain't like that lady who didn't change your baby's diapers for, uh, for two weeks. And when somebody asked her, why didn't you change your kids' diapers? And she said, well, the box said 30 pounds. <laughs> That's a terrible joke, ain't it? But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I hope they didn't get that.